All right, so this is mechanical advantage and efficiency. Uh, we're talking about mechanical advantage with simple machines. So mechanical advantage is a unitless ratio of effort versus resistance. And this effort, if you remember from our simple machines notes, that effort is also our input. So when we use a simple machine, we're using our, uh, our effort force is our input force, the force we put in, and the resistance is what we're resisting or what we're getting out. And so in a lever, we push on the input side, we, and the resistance is the output side. Uh, that's what, hap what happens on the other side of this. And there are two types of mechanical advantage. Our first is ideal mechanical advantage. And in a perfect world, in an ideal world, we end up with ideal mechanical advantage, which has to do with distances. Now, there's going to be some loss on these, but, um, but we do have these distances. And so our effort distance oh, divided by our resistance distance. So it's a ratio of what we put in to what we get out. And so that's our first type of mechanical advantage. Our second type of mechanical advantage is actual mechanical advantage. And actual mechanical advantage deals with forces. And so we get this distance mechanical advantage versus the forces mechanical advantage. And ideally, we should get the same thing, but they are a little bit different. And in fact, the resistance force divided by our effort force is our actual mechanical advantage. So these are different. It's in the ideal, it's an effort to resistance. In actual, it's a resistance to an effort. And the idea is that our forces are smaller. When we use a simple machine, for mechanical advantage to happen, we have a smaller force. And so our resistance force is that big one, and that's the big one we want in the numerator. We want a big number in the numerator because we want a large mechanical advantage. And so this force of resistance is that is that um, larger number. The resistance force is the one we want to uh, to get out. The effort force is the one we want to put in, and so we want a small effort force, just like we want a smaller resistance distance to give us a good mechanical advantage. So we get our three column worksheet, and you're going to want to uh, to write this down. We've got an ideal mechanical advantage, which we abbreviate IMA, and we know that the formula is IMA is equal to D sub E over D sub R, where D sub E is our effort distance, and D sub R is our resistance distance. The R is resistance, the E is effort, and Ds we know are distances. We measure distance in meters and distance in meters, and so we've got mechanical advantage is a meter divided by a meter, and anything divided by itself is just one, so we have no unit for mechanical advantage. If we wanted to solve this mechanical advantage formula, we use the same triangle we have. We have IMA equals DE over DR, and so we just cover those up. We've got IMA is equal to DE over DR. If we want to solve for DR, we've got DE over IMA, and if we want to solve for DE, we've got IMA, the mechanical advantage, times their distance resistance. That's fun to say. All right, actual mechanical advantage, we have... AMA is FR, force of resistance, over the force of effort, where FR is that resistance force, and FE is the effort force. Our units, we have newtons divided by newtons, once again, so we have no unit when we look at actual mechanical advantage. We can use the same help triangle for this one, and that same help triangle is uh, actual mechanical advantage. We've got force of resistance, and we've got effort force there. So we've got the resistance force and the effort force. So AMA is FR over FE, FE is FR over AMA, and FR is AMA times FE, uh, just like the other one. Now, of course, if you need to pause this right now and go back a little bit to get those recorded, that would be appropriate. But let's talk about efficiency. So once we talk about efficiency, we know that no machine can be greater than 100% efficient. We can never get more energy out of something than we put into it, or we can never get more work out of something than, uh, than, we, than we put into it. So 
I've actually written this backwards. The work gotten out of a machine can never be greater than the work put in. Work done to a machine can always be greater. We're never greater than 100% efficient. So uh, this is this is actually switched around. The work that comes out of a machine can never be greater than the work that goes into a machine, the work done on a machine. Uh, and, and the big reason for that is friction. Energy is always lost. We always lose energy as heat. This energy that gets lost is movement. It's, uh, it's extra motions. Think about your mousetrap race cars. When you were running your mousetrap race cars, if the wheel wobbled, that's energy that wasn't used to go forward. It was used to go side to side. If you're using friction on the axles, that's not friction on the on the road and so those those two frictions are, are losing energy and so you get less energy going into the uh, to the motion of the car so if we calculate efficiency we know that efficiency is a percentage we calculate it as a percentage and that is the work we get out divided by the work we put in times 100 to get it a percentage and so work out is the work produced and work in is the work that we put in. So this is our effort and this is our resistance. Our units, work is measured in joules, work is measured in joules, joules over joules is uh, times 100 is a percentage, so we have a unit that is a percentage. We're not going to give it any units, joules over joules is 1, so we just have no units here, it's just measured as a percent. Now we have our help, uh, and it's rare that you're going to have to find work or the efficiency or the or the in we're just going to probably find the efficiency and so we've got the work that comes out and the work that goes in and times 100 if you need to solve the rest of these algebraically you can but that is how we do efficiency and so you're going to have some homework that's on those three things and you should be all set to do it so now that you've finished the video, you can go and look at the form that I've put up on Google Classroom for you so you can answer the questions and uh, make sure that you've, you've done that uh, so that I can see that you've watched the video. Thank you very much.